In this lesson, we'll discuss how to create concave shapes using a combination of the inset, extrude, and bridge tools. All right, so up to this point, we've created the major forms of our dumpster by using just the extrude tool and creating those forms coming off of that. But now we are up to the point to where we need to continue creating the forms, but now we have uh, concave forms of our object here. And so what we need to do is we need to um, take some polygons and we need to extrude those into the object itself. So looking at our concept, we have a couple of issues here. Uh, the first one uh, underneath the lid is that uh, it extrudes down into the dumpster. And then we also have this, uh, the truck mount to where it goes completely through this object so we can actually see through that. So a couple of different challenges, they just need to be handled in a couple of different ways. So our first challenge is to create the concave shape on the inside of the dumpster. So one way to do this is to go to polygon mode and select the polygons uh, that we want to extrude inward. So let's go ahead and just take these polygons right here and let's extrude those. Now I'm going to extrude these in a negative direction. But one thing that I want you to notice, a um, couple of things. Uh, first off, notice the direction of the extrusion. Notice how it's coming off at this diagonal angle. Remember that whenever we are, uh, whenever we are working on um, angled polygons like this, it's going to extrude it in its own local direction. And if, even if we went to group, we're still going to get that uh, same uh, reaction or result. So let's cancel this. The second thing that I wanted you to notice on that was it was also um, extruding and cutting through the geometry. So this edge right here is perfectly in line with the edges of these polygons. So we're not getting any thickness to the inside of our dumpster. So what we need to do is we need to create a little bit of a rim to this. Okay, now a little bit more of a rim than what we have here. So a way that we could do this is we could use the inset tool. Now the inset tool, what it does is it takes the groups of polygons that you have selected and creates another group of exactly the same thing on the inside of those. So if I take my amount up, you can see that we are creating uh, a new set of polygons here. Now we just want to go a little bit. We don't want to go really far. Okay. And we can hit OK. So now if I were to end or extrude this, you see that we are no longer on the outside edges. Now we still have the issue of it um, extruding diagonally and that could be a little bit of an issue. So how do we take care of that? How do we extrude straight down if it's not allowing us to do that? Well, we still use extrude, but we just have to use it in a different way. So if we hit our extrude settings, instead of using a negative direction, let's just type in zero. Now, it doesn't look like it's actually extruded, but it has created the polygons we need to pull those straight down. So if we extrude at zero and hit OK, we can take those polygons that are still selected and pull those straight down. Now let's make sure that we have our constraints turned off really quickly. And now let's go ahead and pull that straight down. And you'll see that we get the same reaction as extruding it straight down. So if you need uh, something like that, this is the technique that we would use to extrude that straight down in the world axis. So let's pull that down. Now the other issue that we have is we can extrude this, but we want to be careful that we're not going through the model like so. So if I hit F3 to go back to our shaded view, we can see that it's sticking out the bottom there. And that's going to be a problem. So if I go back to my front view by hitting F and then F3 to go back to wireframe, let me pull that back up to where this corner is still inside. Now the other issue that we have is that it's not level. Okay, We need it to be straight across like so. So how do we do that? How can we get that to, um, to be correct and to be flat? Well we could use the Make Planar or we could select the vertices on that line and we could use the Scale tool which we've already seen. But let's go ahead and use the Make Planar. Let's um, hit the Z direction and that should flatten that out perfectly. Now if I pull that straight down, I can get pretty close to the edge. And I want the same thickness all the way through. So you can see the thickness here to here. And we want that on the bottom as well. 
So let's turn off polygon mode and let's hit P on our keyboard and then F3 to turn on our shaded view and we've created a concave shape. Alright, so we've learned how to create that rim using the inset tool. Now what we want to do is we want to create that same type of effect but we want to be able to go through the object completely just like on these truck mounts. So a couple of ways uh, the first way that we should do that is we need to create a little bit of a rim. Okay, So a common mistake is to take this polygon and extrude it in a negative direction. Okay, And doing so you can see here that we don't have any thickness to that and that's going to be a problem. So to create that thickness we want to use inset. Let's take that amount up and let's give it just a little bit of a thickness here. Let's go to something around like 0.7 and then we'll hit OK. Now we've created that thickness here but we didn't do that on the back side so we want to make sure that we match that. So let's use our settings and it should keep our previous setting that we used there and we also need to do that on the other side. Now let's select both of those at the same time by holding down control and using the inset settings still the same number and hit OK. So now at this point we have the polygons that we need but now what we need to do is we need to um, create that hole. So how do we do that? We could go ahead and extrude it and if we did in the negative direction we're getting it but we still have those polygons on the inside. We need to get rid of those so how do we do that? How do we how do we create this shape? Well it just it's just done a little bit differently. We still use that inset to create the rim but we don't use extrude this time. Instead let's make sure that we have all of those polygons selected and delete them out. So hit delete on the keyboard and that will get rid of those. Now it looks correct but there's still a problem. We're looking at the back side of these polygons right here and that's not good. What we need to do is we need to create polygons that bridge this gap. So a way that we can do that is using the bridge tool. So looking at this I have borders. So if I select this border and that border on the back side I can come down and use the bridge tool. So let's use our settings and open that up. Now by bridging that you can see that we've created some polygons that bridge from this border to that border. We can set up our segments so if we want multiple segments in there we can set those up. We could even adjust twist and angles and things like that but this is not absolutely necessary at this point. We just need a single bridge from this border to that border. So let's hit OK and let's do the same thing on this side. Let's select both of those borders and hit bridge. Now this time we could just simply hit bridge and it will create that for us. Alright so now we've created a convex shape that goes completely through this object. Alright so now that we have our negative forms, our concave forms, now what we want to do is we want to move on um, into our next lesson where we're going to start building out uh, some more of those finer details. So we're still going to continue on with these concave shapes but now what I want to do is I want to show you a different tool called bevel that will create um, a nice extruded edge or a nice extruded shape but it gives us a little bit of an edge and it kind of softens um, the overall extrusion itself. So we'll get started with that next.